Well, for the first time in three weeks, the Oklahoma Sooners will be playing in Norman. That's right, Gaylord Memorial Stadium for a 2.30 ABC slash ESPN2 kickoff against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Both teams coming off road wins just a week ago, both winning in the Sunflower State. And before we uh, talk about that and break down the matchup between the Sooners and the Red Raiders, uh, first of all, injury notes for the Oklahoma Sooners who come into the game on Saturday as a 14.5 point favorite. Um, Injury-wise, it does not look like Jordan Evans will be playing. And if so, he's going to be very, very limited after an injury um, a week ago against the Wildcats. So Frank Shannon looks like will get the start at linebacker. But good news, and you know, hit me over the head with a uh, club if you've heard this before, but uh, looks like Devontae Vaughn will play. Now, we said that last week. But that ankle sprain turned out to be a high ankle sprain against West Virginia. So the severity of the injury was higher than we could have expected. So that's why you didn't see him against Texas or K-State. But they've got to have Devontae Bond, especially against the high-scoring offense of the Red Raiders. So it looks like Bond uh, will be in action as well. So fantastic news for Oklahoma from that regard, but not so good news. Again, it doesn't look like Jordan Evans is going to play. And if so, he's going to be limited. Um, you know, entering... Last Saturday's game, you probably already heard it by now, but you know the 55 to nothing win is amazing for Oklahoma. That's one thing you can say. Even more amazing was the fact that the day before that Friday, an eight-hour flight delay at Will Rogers Airport in OKC. That's right. The Sooners waited nearly eight hours after three planes. That's right, three. Not one, not two, but three had a mechanical issue of some sort. Yeah, not good. So what did the players do during the eight-and-a-half stretch? Well, Shimaji P. Ryan actually was watching YouTube videos, and Eric Stryker was actually on the phone with friends, kind of a way to pass the time. And the OU staff was busy making sure that the players had plenty to eat with a little bit of fast food. So the nutrition part, yeah, that was covered as well. And the Sooners finally left the airport a little after, um, I think, around 11 o'clock, got into Manhattan, Kansas. Very early Saturday morning, checked into the hotel in Manhattan about an hour after that. So by the time they got settled, they still had um, a game to think about and play. Because you got to remember, uh, by the time they probably got in bed, it was probably 2.30 or 3 in the morning. And kickoff was about 11 and a half hours away. But the Sooners, according to Bob Stoops, still stuck with their normal itinerary. They got up at their normal time, which meant they didn't get a whole lot of sleep. And you know something? In one way, this might have all been a good thing, talking about the delay. Now, how could that be? Well, it's because they really didn't have a whole lot of time to, I guess you could say, you know, stress about the game. Also, to, you know, they could just go right into the routine of playing football as soon as they got up. You know, that might have eliminated some of the jitters. And the Sooners definitely treated this like a business trip and were far more focused and far more determined than they were against the Texas Longhorns. And you saw it with the 55 to nothing performance and Mayfield throwing five TD passes. And, of course, the Sooner offense um, in other ways, showing brilliance as well with terrific receiving play by Westbrook as well um, as by Andrews and by Shepard. And the defense getting the job done, too, with a couple of uh, Zach Sanchez picks, named Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, by the way. Another honor for uh, Zach Sanchez. And the developing play, again, of Jordan Thomas, having him back. Hey, when he stays out of trouble, good things happen because that means he's on the field. And that means from his corner, he can make an impact, as did Will Johnson, um, who made an impact as well at the uh, nickelback spot. And that's important because when you have a guy like uh, Will Johnson out there, when you need five defensive backs, that means that Stephen Parker, who's having a good year for OU, can stay at home from his safety position. He didn't have to cheat up. He can play where he's more comfortable at, at his safety spot. So, of course, entering this week, now that Oklahoma has moved up two spots in the uh, AP poll to number 17 and five spots up. Now 15 in the coaches poll. Now that things are looking up and you're at home, you wonder, okay, what's the focus for Texas Tech? Well, before you can think about anything else, the reason why I'm coming on late in the week to do this report was because of weather. Um, you might remember weather four years ago was a factor. 2011, it led to a uh, delay because of lightning for that game against Texas Tech. And by the time the game resumed, which was well after 8 o'clock, Tech had jumped all over the Sooners. Again, this was four years ago. But that was important because Texas Tech was able to pull off one of the biggest upsets this decade and win at Oklahoma and snap the 39-game home winning streak, which at that time was the largest 
in college football. 39 consecutive home games, and um, as Miyagi would say from Karate Kid, that winning streak was squashed like grape. So that's one of those historical references. Well, as far as the weather now, um, yeah, Thursday in the Norman area, a ton of rain uh, came down, and then we were expecting the same on Friday. So far on this Friday, overcast, and Saturday, it should be fine. It might be a little bit cooler than normal, so if you're going to the game, you might want to bring a light jacket at the very minimum, uh, so that way uh, you don't get too cold in the stands. 2.30 kickoff again Saturday, but as far as the wet stuff, uh, shouldn't be much of it, at least nothing like we saw Thursday, and who knows, it might actually be a, a rain-free Saturday. One can only hope. Now, of course, Baker Mayfield played at Texas Tech, and if you don't know that by now, um, I'm not sure where you've been. Of course, two years ago, started seven games. His counterpart, uh, Patrick Mahomes, this is his seventh game um, starting this year for Texas Tech. Um, Mayfield, of course, was a Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year as a Red Raider two years ago. A walk-on, got hurt, and Davis Webb um, played the rest of the regular season. By the time Mayfield was ready to go, Coach Kingsbury, who at that time was in his first year at Tech, thought that the two, both uh, Mayfield and Webb, should battle for that starting position for the bowl game. Of course, you know Mayfield thought that that job was his, um, and, and injury was the only reason why it wasn't. And then um, what happened after that, who knows, except for the fact that we know that Mayfield left Tech and couldn't play last year for Oklahoma, could practice, but couldn't play because Tech said, you know, you have to sit out one year uh, if you transfer. OU was trying to get that changed, but it was up to Tech, up to the Big 12, and it was a no-go. So that's why you didn't see Mayfield at all last year for the Sooners, at least, playing. This year, of course, now it's Mayfield. And, you, you know, this guy has so much um, – you know, going through his blood, he's got so much adrenaline that he plays with, so much energy, what well, you love to see from your quarterback. But he has to remember, too, that he still has to keep his cool, and he has to understand that, hey, it can't all be just him. Mayfield is going to have an opportunity to see the ground game get the job done. Last year in Lubbock, um, OU actually came from behind in the second half and dominated Tech, thanks in part to that running game. P. Ryan had over 200 yards last year. And I know this is an air raid attack, Um Installed, of course, by Lincoln Riley. Of course, he was a former Mike Leach assistant at Tech. But I would be surprised if you see the Sooners do more of the same. That is not so much ignore the pass, but run a little bit more than normal because Tech is not a good team against the run. Tech last week, they, they got their fifth win of the year. And by the way, they didn't win five games all of last year. That's right, they went four and eight. So they're one win away from both eligibility at five and two. But what Texas Tech team will we see? Will it be the one that played so well at Arkansas and pulled off a big upset at that time in Little Rock to uh, get revenge on the Razorbacks from the year before? Or will it be that team we saw last week against Kansas in which um, Ryan Willis, the KU quarterback, completed 70% of his passes and threw for over 300 yards? And by the way, uh, DeAndre Mann, um, the running back for Kansas, ended up rushing for um, over 100 yards and had seven yards of carry. Defensively, you know, Tech held the run and got a big play at the end when it was just a three-point game in Lawrence uh, with the interception return for a touchdown by Deshaun Johnson. That pretty much saved Tech from becoming a big upset victim because it was just a three-point game, 23-20 Tech late, about five minutes ago. KU had the ball, but it was a Johnson interception return for a touchdown. They had to make Red Raider fans feel a little bit better at that particular time. So there's absolutely no doubt that the uh, Red Raiders – did not play their best game last week. Now, you know, Mahomes did throw for over 300 yards. DeAndre Washington probably had the biggest standout game amongst any Red Raider with 157 yards on the ground. But uh, Mahomes only completed, get this, 58% of his passes. That's why he had 21 incompletions. Was it a sign of things to come for Texas Tech entering the second half of the season? Or was they just simply looking ahead to the Sooners? If you're a Red Raider fan, you'd pretty much like to say the latter. You know, thinking ahead to the game against Norman. Who gets pumped up to play Kansas, right? But the fact that the Red Raiders were um, in a ball game with about five minutes to go with one of the worst teams in the country at 23-20 tells you that, that Tech mentally wasn't ready and maybe Kansas played better than what we thought. But to say that Tech's going to play that way again, you know, you might be kidding yourself. After all, you know, we'd be hypocrites as Sooner fans to say that Tech's going to play like that again. Know this because two weeks ago, oh, you played like junk against Texas. And last week, completely different team. Now, am I saying Texas is going to go into Norman and win big? No, but I am saying that I would find it hard to believe 
that Tech is just going to lay an egg and play like they did last week in Lawrence and do the same in Norman. I expect Tech's offense will score points. I just don't think they can contain OU's offense either on the ground or through the air. Look, as long as Mayfield plays within himself and doesn't, you know, get over pumped because when you're playing against your former team, a team that pretty much you think burns you, then the thought is, you know, something I'm going to show them, and you might get away from the whole objective, which is make it a team game and just play within yourself and, you know, just don't overdo it from an energy standpoint. I look for the Sooner offense to have a huge day. I'm going to pick it 45-28. Um, the over under the total in this game is 74 and a half. I've got it at uh, 73, so I'm pretty close to what Vegas has, and the Sooners are favored by 14 and a half. I got OU winning by 17, so that's almost consistent with what the boys from Nevada are saying about this game. I do think Tech, because it is a passing offense, which you did not see against Kansas State or against Texas, I do think the senior secondary is going to give up some. So the key is win some battles. Um, the big thing is if you're the Sooners, you know Tech is capable of, of moving the ball up and down the field. Try to get some victories here and there. You know, you know, force turnovers, obviously. Make sure that if they drive deep, Basic talk, you know, force them to field goals, things like that. And, hey, in a game like this, that could make all the difference between victory and losing or the difference in this game being decided in the fourth quarter or having it come down to the wire. So I do think the Sooner defense will be challenged this week, kind of like what they were challenged against Tulsa from about a month ago, kind of the same offense. But I do look for the Sooners with their offense to be too much at home, 45-28. OU, in my opinion, should be able to cover that 14 and a half. My post-game show of the Sooners and Red Raiders will be late Saturday night or Sunday morning. Please check it out on this very channel. And my college football picks, I'll have those later for you as well. Boomer Sooner.